Hello everyone. So a question I sometimes see in the comments on the Teaching Tactics episode on the German assault rifle platoon is how the American BAR, the Browning Automatic Rifle, how that compares in this story about the evolution of individual firepower. And it's a good question because the BAR is a very interesting weapon that is hard to define and it evolved throughout the decades that it saw use. So I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Can the BAR be considered a type of assault rifle? Now there's really two sides to this question, technical and tactical. Technical is pretty straightforward, so we'll just quickly go through that one first. But tactical is a bit more open to interpretation. So uh, we'll do that one uh, later. So technical, there are broadly speaking four, um, four demands that a assault rifle has to fulfill to be classified as one. So this isn't an exhaustive list and they are up for debate, but most modern assault rifles and then going all the way back to the, the German Sturmgewehr, they all they have to fulfill these four demands and then some. It's, it's always a bit up for debate, but these are the four that I used in the video on the German Sturmzug. So starting at the top, it has to have an intermediate cartridge. That's probably the one real defining feature of an assault rifle. So it needs to fire a round that is in between a pistol caliber and a rifle caliber. And for the BAR, the answer is quite simple. It just doesn't fire one. It fires a full power rifle cartridge, the same one that is fired by the, the bolt action rifles and the, the Springfields and the other machine guns. So that already disqualifies it from being classed as a assault rifle in the true technical sense. Now the next point is having a high capacity magazine. That's a bit more up for debate. So typically assault rifles nowadays have 30 round magazines. The Sturmgewehr also had a 30 round magazine. And if you then look at submachine guns that were used alongside the BAR, they typically also fired 30 round magazines, but then a pistol caliber, of course. So it's quite clear that 30 rounds was the, um, the accepted standard whereas the BAR had a 20 round magazine, so it fell a little short. However, you do have to take into account that the BAR was first introduced in the First World War, so it saw action in 1918. And having a 20 round detachable box magazine is quite impressive actually for that time period, if you compare it to like the, the bolt action rifles. So it falls a little bit short of what most assault rifles had, but 20 rounds it's up for debate if you can call it high capacity or not. The third point is select fire, which simply means it has to fire both single shots, so semi-automatic, and then also fire fully automatic. Now the BAR is interesting because it started out as a select fire weapon. So the first models that were in use in 1918, they had a single shot function and then you could flip the switch to a fully automatic mode. However, the Americans changed that in the, on the models that they then used in the Second World War. And instead of a single shot mode, they had two types of automatic fire, a higher rate of fire and a lower rate of fire. So it really depends on the model. The first models, they were select fire, and the later models, well, not having a single shot, that's the entire point of select fire. Sure, you can have two types of automatic fire, but they both broadly do the same thing. So you could argue, that the lower rate of fire, it was slow enough that if you pulled the trigger very softly, then you could squeeze off a single round, but it wasn't really mechanically designed for single shots, so I'd argue it is no longer select fire on the, the models that were used in the, the Second World War. And then finally, again a bit subjective, it has to be uh, a bit light rifle or a carbine sized, so that's what you see most assault rifles they, um, they try to go for a middle ground between a rifle and a submachine gun in terms of dimensions and overall weight. So um, the German Sturmgewehr was quite big for an assault rifle, but it was of course one of the first ones. Now the BAR is really on the heavy and the large side for an assault rifle. It's in the name, it's an automatic rifle, so the overall ergonomics are very rifle-like. It has the weight, it has the length of one, and then some. That was actually one of the, the principal complaints of the BAR, is that it was quite heavy for what it did. 
So I'd say it doesn't fulfill that demand either. So that's quite easy. On the technical level, you can't class it as an assault rifle. Now, on the, in the tactical sense, things get more interesting because yeah, how do you actually use a weapon? And with the BAR, you see that it has a fairly broad range of use that also overlaps with how an assault rifle was typically used. So it is a bit harder to uh, put into easy bullet points, but there are three that uh, I want to cover. So the first one has to do with the level of adoption. Typically with an assault rifle, you're looking at a universal rifle adoption. So it has to replace both the submachine guns and also the rifles, both the bolt actions and the self-loaders. And that's how the Germans also intended their assault rifle to be adopted. Of course, they never produced enough of them, not enough magazines, not enough ammunition. But what you see in the Sturmzug, so in the assault platoon, that is their vision for the future. If they did have enough assault rifles, that's how they planned to use them. And you see quite clearly that it has become the, the dominant small arm, only really supplemented by the machine guns at the platoon level. But the two assault squads, they're fully equipped with assault rifles. So that kind of universal adoption was just never meant for the BAR. It was what we would nowadays call a assault, a squad automatic weapon. So it is a squad level weapon that then supplements the rifles of the squad. So in the First World War, those were bolt actions and then later those were the, uh, the self-loading Garands. And uh, the BAR was always a supplement. So a bit like a Garand that can fire in fully automatic mode. Now, uh, in terms of adoption, it also changed. So I believe in the First World War, they actually started out as a platoon level asset. But then in the Second World War, they were pushed down to the squad level. So typically an American rifle squad had one BAR, similar to how the British used the Bren gun or the Germans used the MG42. So it's a squad automatic weapon, squad level firepower. Now, later on in the war, more BARs became available and it was common for a rifle squad to get a second BAR. So you would get like a split fire team structure. And then the Marine Corps, they went really far with their BARs. They, by the end of the war, they went for a triangle squad structure where you had three equal fire teams of four men. And then each fire team had one BAR gunner. So in other words, one in four men had a BAR or you had three BARs in a 13 man rifle squad. So it, it still isn't universal adoption as an assault rifle ideally is, but it is getting pretty close to rifling the Garand um, in just how common it was in a rifle squad. Now a, a second point to highlight is whether the emphasis in the design is on semi-automatic fire or fully automatic fire. So what you typically see with assault rifles is they are biased towards single shots. So that's what you see in the manual on the Sturmzug, is it is quite clear that the German assault rifle is typically used in aimed single shots. And then even in close quarters, you're still using single shots, but you're just rapid firing them. And you're only really flipping the switch to fully automatic fire in exceptional circumstances. And that's also true for most assault rifles still in use today. Now the BAR, like I said, it went in the other direction. They actually removed the single shot function and went for a, yeah, two modes of fully automatic fire. So again, you see it is getting pushed away from what you could consider assault rifle territory more towards machine gun use. And um, it's a bit of a side story, but also the inclusion of a bipod is another clue. So the original BAR didn't have a bipod, but then the Second World War models did get one. So you see uh, it has a bias towards fully automatic fire and it gets a bipod. So it is getting pushed more into this concentrated squad level fire rule and away from what you would consider a assault rifle. And then the final point is again a bit subjective, which is can it function in close combat? Can it be used in the close assault, similar to how a submachine gun would be used for trench clearing, room clearing, that kind of stuff. And again, it's really hard to quantify because you could also use a Bren gun or even an MG42 for room clearing. It's just how well is the design suited for it. And the BAR is quite special because it is after all an automatic rifle. It still really clings to the rifle 
ergonomics. You can see it in the magazine placement. It is overall quite similar in layout to a, uh, a Thompson gun, for example, compared to like a brand gun, just looking at magazine placement and stuff. Uh, so to give some insight into this question, yeah, how is it used? Is it used as a machine gun? Is it used more as a close assault weapon? I've got a few sources to share. Uh, the first two are food manuals, so official publications. And then I have some uh, what you could consider user feedback sources as well. So starting with the official ones, FM2315, that's the BAR food manual. Now, one thing you notice right away is there is a lot of emphasis on the machine gun basics. So things like beaten zones, grazing fire, plunging fire. That is your standard machine gun theory that you would also see in a field manual for a water-cooled machine gun or like the other heavy machine guns. But then there's also an interesting quote here that you wouldn't see in such a manual. The fire of automatic riflemen armed with the BAR will generally be opened as close to the enemy as possible. So there you see it is a bit ambivalent. Yeah, it is on the one hand a machine gun, you can do machine gun stuff with it, but you can also use it in close quarters. Moving on to FM710, which is on the rifle company, and that also includes the platoon and the squad level. So um, it says, the automatic rifle provides the rifle squad leader with an easily controlled and maneuvered weapon capable of a large volume of fire. Its lightweight permits the automatic rifleman to maintain the rate of advance of riflemen and to fire from any position. So there it emphasizes the flexibility that comes with the rifle-sized package. Now on maintaining fire superiority, which is a typical task of a proper machine gun, it says, the automatic rifle's capacity for putting down a large volume of fire makes it especially useful for this purpose. So it also acknowledges that yes, it is also suitable for concentrated base of fire kind of work. And then on assault fire, so that is the the final dash into the enemy position, where you're both shooting and moving as you are sweeping through the enemy's position. It says, automatic riflemen and riflemen with bayonets fixed, all taking full advantage of existing cover, advance rapidly toward the enemy and fire as they advance. So again, very aggressive shooting from the hip kind of stuff. So there's a bit of an ambivalence, you could say, in the official sources or maybe an acknowledgement of the inherent flexibility of the, the weapon. And to really show you the, the extremes of this spectrum of use, I've got two user experience sources. So starting with the one that really illustrates the aggressive close-up assault use, I have the Medal of Honor citation of Staff Sergeant Lucien Adams of the 3rd Infantry Division that he earned in 1944 in France. Now it is a Medal of Honor citation, so that already tells us that this isn't the regular kind of use. You need to do something special to earn a medal. But it does illustrate that while it wasn't everyday use, the BAR was capable, it was mechanically capable of being used in this aggressive role, if he put it in the right hands at the right place at the right time. So to quote, when his company was stopped in its effort to drive through the Mortagne forest to reopen the supply line to the isolated 3rd Battalion, Staff Sergeant Adams braved the concentrated fire of machine guns in a lone assault on a force of German troops. Although his company had progressed less than 10 yards and had lost 3 killed and 6 wounded, Staff Sergeant Adams charged forward, dodging from tree to tree, firing a borrowed BAR from the hip. Despite intense machine gun fire, which the enemy directed at him, and rifle grenades, which struck the trees over his head, showering him with broken twigs and branches, Staff Sergeant Adams made his way to within 10 yards of the closest machine gun and killed the gunner with a hand grenade. An enemy soldier threw hand grenades at him from a position only 10 yards distant. However, Staff Sergeant Adams dispatched him with a single burst of BAR fire. Charging into the vortex of the enemy fire, he killed another machine gunner at 15 yards range with a hand grenade and forced the surrender of two supporting infantrymen. Although the remainder of the German group concentrated the full force of its automatic weapon fire in a desperate effort to knock him out, he proceeded through the woods to find and exterminate five more of the enemy. 
Finally, when the third German machine gun opened up on him at a range of 20 yards, Staff Sergeant Adams killed the gunner with BAR fire. In the course of the action, he personally killed nine Germans, eliminated three enemy machine guns, vanquished a specialized force which was armed with automatic weapons and grenade launchers, cleared the woods of hostile elements and reopened the severed supply lines to the assault companies of his battalion. So there you have it, that is about as aggressive as you can get. Really close assault in woodland, within hand grenade range of the enemy, and he made excellent use of the mobility and the firepower of his BAR. So this illustrates that it was a very special action and it earned him a very special medal. But the BAR was capable of this kind of very aggressive use that you would normally associate with submachine guns. Now on the other side of the, uh, the spectrum, I have an article by Lieutenant Edwin Kahn from the Infantry Journal published in October 1944, which is actually the same month that Sergeant Adams earned his medal, so closely related in uh, time. And um, what this lieutenant argues for is the opposite. He says the BAR is better used as a squad level machine gun. To quote, Too often we try to use the BAR as a rifle or tommy gun when its most effective employment calls for it being used as a machine gun. This neglect shows a lack of understanding on the part of squad, platoon and company leaders of the most profitable tactical uses of the BAR. As a result, the BAR man may quite often look upon himself merely as a rifleman cursed with a heavier burden than his fellows. However, just as it is the mission of other arms to support the advance of the infantry, so it is the mission of the automatic weapons in the squad or platoon to support the advance of riflemen for the final assault. So that is the, the opposite side of the spectrum. He argues that the BAR is better suited in this concentrated base of fire rule. And I think this is really the, the answer here. Is the BAR is best seen as a, an automatic rifle that sits in between two extremes. So on the one hand you have the, the dedicated close assault weapons, the Tommy guns and hand grenades. And then on the other hand, at the company level, the Americans had their belt-fed, tripod-mounted Browning machine guns, which they called their light machine guns. And then the BAR as an automatic rifle, kind of set in between, along with the Garand, as a squad-level, platoon-level automatic weapon that then combined concentrated automatic firepower in still a rifle-sized package. And it is this broad range of use both as a machine gun and as a close assault weapon that really defines the BAR. And yes, it does push it into the territory of the assault rifle, even if it doesn't exactly fit the rule. So it is a very interesting question and the BAR is definitely an interesting subject within this larger discussion of individual firepower and how that then influenced squad and platoon and company uh, tactics. So thanks for asking the question and thanks for watching.